live with Rushi from Movement Network. I'm super stoked to go in to just dive into this, man. I've got a ton of questions for you. Um, I'm going to give you an introduction. Um, so Rushi is an experienced smart contract engineer by trade after starting with the EVM and Cosmos DeFi. He says that realizing the large scale performance and security benefits of the move language, he became a leading DeFi move engineer within the Aptos ecosystem. Here we go. Quickly after Rushi launched Movement, a community first modular layer one leveraging avalanche subnets and warp messaging to ensure high TPS, low latency, sub-second finality and the integration of avalanche's large TVL within a current variance of VM technology. So this talk is gonna be crazy about alternative VMs. So what excites me about this, Rushi, is is that uh, you know movement is is bringing um, uh, move to Avalanche subnets, and 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 we at Landslide are bringing Cosm Wasm, like the the Wasm uh, WebAssembly VM. So happy to dive in and, and learn about your experience. Yeah, I can just kick off with a quick intro um, and then bring me to where I am. Um, so I've, yeah, I've been a nerd for most of my life. I started off as a slowly engineer. Um, for like some early DeFi protocols within Ethereum. Um, I personally saw the wrath of hacker attacks, like we're getting woken up at like 3 a.m. and it was like a vulnerability that I got a patch and my team scrambling. Um, and what a Cosmos as an engineer within that space did stuff um, for DeFi protocols there. Um, once again, saw a lot of vulnerabilities um, that could be patched up if there was a superior smart contract language. And then the idea of Facebook uh, DM project came around. So for those who don't know, the move language was originally developed by Facebook, um, the DM and Libra project. Uh, due to regulatory issues, um, the team virtually split apart into two separate sub subgroups. So you had Aptos and Sui um, kind of come away from this Facebook blockchain team. Aptos got the pred like predominantly um, BD people, um, so they kind of pushed it to market first. Um, so we got all the cracked engineers um, and the tech people. Um, so they further iterated upon the move language um, and brought some new innovations. So that's particularly exciting. Um, but long story short, Aptos launched. Uh, I was an Aptos builder with DeFi engineer within that space. Um, and yeah, it was a great experience, like just building, move, and building, uh, being in a community that was like very excited for the new security and performance upgrades. Uh, a lot of these people and engineers have also seen the wrath of hacker attacks. Um, notably, I was like around a lot of engineers who were part of the DAO attack, um, which is a real attack, and move like fundamentally patched that up. Um, I'll get more into that and talk more about move itself. Um, but yeah, I, I fell in love with move language, but um, just didn't like how Aptos handled it. I feel like the sentiments kind of shared across uh, verticals, um, pretty low TVL, pretty low transaction volume. Um, TPS is like six TPS, I think now it's like eight or something. That's um, crazy. Which was promised to be 160,000, <laughs> which is um, a little bit, a little bit way off from that. Um, so when I was like working for a gaming protocol, we literally could not even build a gaming app because if you're trying to build an app with six TPS, like a gaming protocol, it's like you might as well just use Web2 protocols at that point. Um, so, so ultimately, that know, team, could, what are they what saying? Are they What's, saying? The What's the reason? Oh, oh yes. by the way, I think oh, we might have some. Have some um, um, you might want to mute me on your. your on your other line, yeah, perfect. Um, is it good? Yep. What's the What's the reasoning that they provide when they say, "Hey, we're only giving you eight of one hundred sixty thousand? So I think there's a, there's a multitude of issues. The first um, would be the validator consensus network. Um, so a the token share is very very centralized with within the team investors. So there's not a lot of staking emissions. I think if you compare it to Avax. Like AVAX, like 50% of some of your staking emissions, um, giving right. back to the community um, and incentivizing validators. Um, AVAX has like 105, uh, it not, Aptos has like 105 validators. Um, and there's not a lot of incentive there. Um, consensus mechanism is very, very infantile. They tried to innovate upon it and bring these new changes, um, but it really didn't end up doing anything. Um, so it just kind of seems like a marking and VC chain. Um, that's the public perception. Wow. And also, it could be such that um, there's not a lot of projects building on top of it. So we're not even seeing the bottleneck happen because if there's no transaction volume, um, the TPS is not going to be high. Um, Sweet, Sui, most people argue it has a good um, like go-to-market strategy and they're going to have better technology. 
um, but definitely wanted to bring move to other ecosystems. Ava Labs particularly was very interested in move, um, and here we are building movement. So, can you before we 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 really dive in? Can you give a background about? Um, there is a like the Ava Labs team um, has some deep ties to Libra. So no top um, stuff and Ted Yin. Yeah, so Ava Labs was very interested in cross VM solutions. Um, they built Rust VM uh, recently, um, and they were interested in how can we bring Move to Avalanche. And obviously, the subnet architecture, um, especially with the new rollout of war messaging, Hyper VM is very, very attractive and conducive for cross VM integrations. Um, not just being EVM, but allowing any kind of builder from any system, whether you're Rust to Move, Wasm, etc., um, allowing Avalanche to be a center of development. And that's kind of the narrative they're pushing in the prerogative. Um, which I think is how you see adoption at mass scale, right? Um, the huge struggle we see as builders is if you're building a Solana, you're limited to Rust. If you're building a Cosmos, you're usually limited to like Wasm and EVM with Evmos. Um, but there's not like one centralized hub where any smart contract builder can build like their own blockchain, their own app, and natively communicate with other chains, right? If you're building a Wasm protocol, um, it's pretty hard to bridge, bridge to a Rust VM or a Move VM. You probably need like Layer Zero, Axlar, one of those solutions, right? Um, Avalanche is like pretty much the only spot and place where you can natively communicate with other protocols um, and share liquidity across. Right on. I uh, th thank you for that. What I was uh, alluding to was that Ted Yin, who's at um, Ava Labs and was instrumental in the building of Hot Stuff. Hot Stuff was like sort of repurposed for Libra. Yeah. Um, I think it was recent. I think they, they were, were, I think the contract ended or something and they were able to claw back hot stuff. But um, it's, it's interesting to me that like hearing your introduction about it, that not only was Facebook not able to pull that off just years ago, but still even like the rift among that team, among the DM team, like, you know, Libra had to rebrand as DM then had yep. to rebrand and another rebrand and then a VC chain, like the, the whole narrative kind of just dissolves. Um, so happy to learn more. Yeah, so do, I can del delve into what we're building or I can, sure. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're movement, we're building a modular framework to build and deploy move-based infrastructure, applications and blockchain in any distributed environment. Our thesis is just to see adoption of move. Um, we don't like that it's, um, stuck up in very centralized VC chains um, and in monolithic environments. We want the ability to bring it to Avalanche um, where there's a lot of users, a lot of liquidity, also innovate technologies like war messaging, um, like uh, like bridge, native bridging um, and just overall cross VM integrations. Um, so yeah, a little bit about security. Um, last year we saw $3 billion lost in hacker attacks. Um, and I would say that's one of Web3's biggest struggles in adopt in bringing retail and web to adoption. You can't bring on institutional banks if you're losing millions of dollars every year um, if a hacker like ex exploits a type into flow, right? Um, so the next cycle, whether it's web two, gaming, DeFi, you name it, is gonna value security. How can we ensure that when we are locking up our money into DeFi protocols, into chains, um, the money is not gonna be exploited by any um, hacker? Move was designed by Facebook for this very reason with built-in bytecode verifiers, checking for transaction data, resource type memory safety, um, essentially uses a borrowed checking scheme. So it only allows for one readable reference. Um, when we looked at the DAO attack, basically what we saw was a swarm attack where the attacker was able to withdraw multiple times and basically take that was a re I thought that was yeah. a re-entrancy attack. Yeah, it's a re-entrancy re attack. Um, but the way they do it is they launch like a, it's like multiple transactions at once so they can basically keep on pulling up funds from us. Um, so the built-in bytecode verifier and interpreter um, makes sure that when a transaction is executed, first it checks for type safety, memory safety. So there's no integer overflows that can be executed. Um, there's no memory over, like exploitations that can be taken advantage of. Um, at that point, once a smart contract is deployed, um, it can only be mutated um, by the, the method itself and no other outside factors can influence it. Um, so when you look at the DAO attack, basically they had like eight different instances mute, uh, it, interacting with the one smart contract and making multiple requests. Um, and that caused basically the entire system to collapse with move that would not be possible because it's only one mutable reference and only one, it can be changed 
only by the method of invoking it. Uh, if you want to stop me, go ahead. No, um, no, I totally get it. Thank you. Yeah. And then another issue with the DAO attack and other real estate attacks is when it's happening, there's pretty much no way to know that it happened until after when you see a Twitter thread and saying, hey, this protocol lost $3 million. Um, with move verification tools, whether it's internally within a DeFi system or externally with working auditing firms, can easily pinpoint the target call site. Um, this is called dynamic dispatch. So you can basically see where the vulnerabilities are happening in real time um, and develop tooling to stop it before it gets worse. Um, so let's say someone's getting into the system and making uh, like fraud transactions, we'll be able to know much, much quicker than the Solidity systems. Um, they have defined permissions for module and cat access. So something like um, the Reaper Farm Vault, which lost $1.7 million, I believe, um, that wouldn't be possible in Move. And a lot of um, vault strategies are being built around that. Um, so when you are designing basically a vault for funds, it can only be mutated um, by specific accounts. Um, you can define who can access it, what modules can access it. It gives you a lot more flexibility on that front, um, which is pretty exciting for security. Um, the way to explain this would be in a bank, we typically walk in a bank, only you with your bank card or SSM card can access the vault. Um, that's what Move allows you to do. If you are storing funds in a safe or um, kind of own protocol, only the person who's accessing it or specific modules will be able uh, to get access to the vault, whereas Solidity, you can kind of get around that to various different ways. Understood. So yeah, a little bit about app struggles. I got into this. Don't want to make this uh, app dust slander um, Twitter spaces, but um, very low throughput, very low TVL, 80% of token share owned by team investors. Uh, we want to bring a community first move initiative to Avalanche, which already is a very community first uh, mix system. Um, yeah, that's kind of a prerogative here. Great. So movement is a future proof modular framework to build and deploy move based infrastructure, applications, and blockchains. Um, we're working with various VC firms um, and backed by Ava Labs themselves, so the Blizzard Fund. Um, so got some great partners in terms of Banky, Colony, Avalanche, some key Avalanche partners, as well as firms outside the Avalanche ecosystem with various capital, Torian, um, Avesler, and a few other names coming in the coming weeks. Great. Congrats. Yes, starting up, starting up an Avalanche, building extremely high throughput chain with near instant transaction settlement and parallel processing incubated with Ava Labs. Um, we see the Avalanche subnet as a great architecture for bringing move. Uh, obviously, Avalanche itself has 6,500 TPS, 1240 validators, 1 billion TVL. It can be a very decentralized chain, um, and we can bring move pretty um, seamlessly with Avalanche Go. Yep. So again, like talking about why Avalanche is a question we get a lot. Um, when you talk about like other accessibility like finance and Polygon, both of those are very EVM focused. And the tech is simply far behind at Ava Labs um, in terms of cross VM integrations. Um, when you get Cosmos, the huge struggle there is if you were to launch L1 or a zone on Cosmos, how do you get liquidity? How do you get adoption? The huge struggle we're seeing with Move is yeah, it's a great programming language, but everyone's still stuck on the EVM. How do you bring liquidity to Move? How do you like take away liquidity? Um, and we found so far with Aptos and Sui, um, that's just simply not happening. You can't take away liquidity from EVM directly. Um, so with Avalanche, we essentially can bring liquidity to Move's front doorstep um, with warp messaging, allowing lockman bridging, allowing any um, Move builders to natively tap into Banky, natively tap into Trader Joe, GMX, um, these big EVM protocols. Um, with warp messaging, is native communication. You don't need to go out of your way. Um, so that's kind of what excites about Avalanche. So you guys aren't, aren't going, to, going bridge. to bridge. So we're not going to bridge within Avalanche itself because you have warm messaging, um, which allows for... No, I mean uh, from, 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 Aptos. from Aptos. From Aptos, no. We're not going to bridge as a launch. Um, we're probably going to partnering with like Layer Zero um, to allow bridging for other ecosystems. Um, Aptos bridging would be more down the line. Um, here's some of the architecture. So one of our key theses here is bringing a modular blockchain. Um, we saw struggles with Aptos and Sweet in terms of performance as monolithic chains where you're not able to have customization. We want the ability to provide any builder to choose um, what execution layer they're building on. So whether it's Aptos Move VM, a Sweet Move VM that's also coming out in the coming months, um, but also providing what DA layers to swap out. So we're bringing up a partnership with Eigenlayer 
Um, we're going to be one of the first chains launching with them using Eigen DA, um, which will boost our TPS um, and provide more modular like, architecture to our builders. Can you go into that? We um, Chorus One just presented earlier on the data availability layer um, using Saga. By the way, there's a little feedback. I don't know. Maybe it's on your side. Um, something. Yeah, that there it went away. Um, maybe you can go into how how you're implementing Eigen and and what that means. So Eigen Layer is like a different from Eigen DA. Uh, also, the feedback is when you speak. So when you speak, I'll mute myself. Um, but anyways. Oh. Um, eigen, eigen layer and Celestia are two DA and consensus layers that kind of coupled together. Um, eigen DA is a separate product from Eigen layer, where it's just a DA layer, um, and they provide the ability to plug into any ecosystem, whether it's Avalanche, EVM, um, Cosmos, and provide a higher TPS solution where we can basically publish blocks um, to the data availability layer um, and store data there. Uh, so a huge benefit there is typically um, with Ethereum, they do restaking, so they allow uh, for faster transactions um, and using the same set of collateral over and over again. Obviously, Avalanche isn't Ethereum, so you wouldn't be able to use restaking of Ethereum. So to address that, um, Eigenlayer is rolling out Eigen Day, which is slated to launch like Q3, Q4, 2023. Um, the actual technical specifications are still private uh, and we are close with development teams, so we, we're working on architecture there. Um, I believe the white paper should be going public um, in the coming months and then the public can know about how exactly it works. Um, but basically Eigen DA is a uh, throughput boosting solution that um, that can radically change how Avalanche transactions work. Is this gonna be widely adopted within subnet architecture? I think I think it depends. I, I would personally rec recommend it, but also some subnets don't need it, right? Like if you're a DeFi app that's predominantly um, using a subnet just for your own transactions and you don't need extremely large TPSs, if you're like fine with 100, 200, 300, um, it's probably not worth your engineering effort um, and just more instability in general. I think it's for someone who's looking for extremely high TPS, like we're talking 100,000 plus mark, um, constantly making adjustments and willing to take on the risk of bringing on a new technology that's untested. If you're launching an Avalanche subnet, it's pretty tested, it's pretty war rigorous, it's been through a lot, um, and you have a great su context support system behind that. If you're building an Eigen layer, which is a pretty new technology, Eigen DA, which is even newer than that, um, it's a little bit more volatility there, and I would recommend that for someone um, or project who needs higher team is who are willing to sacrifice. Great, thanks. And, and I see you're you're talk you're adding Solana VM and Suimu VM. Yeah. Could so you... Suimu, yeah. So right now we have an AppDust Move VM um, launched already. It's on our demo. Uh, we have a Sui Move VM coming out in like two months, allowing any Move builder to not only launch an AppDust or Sui. Um, but another benefit of the subnet architecture is with our subnet, we can in theory launch a million, like infinite blockchains. So at launch, we're going to have AppDust Move VM blockchain, a Sui Move VM blockchain. The Solana VM is something that we're still debating and still thinking about internally, um, but it's something that we could do, um, but more so focused on the AppDust Move VM and Sui Move VM. Understood. Uh, just as a note there, there is a Solana IBC connection coming down. So we can we can potentially, uh, through Landslide, we can connect uh, Solana natively to IBC. Yeah, that'd be huge. And yeah, so Swiss for their... So he's going to launch like Q2, Q3. Um, and we want to see us like we're supporting the movie system, right? Um, me and my co founder are both builders in the movie system, builder app does. Um, and we just want to support the move um, builders in general. So, movements can be launching a SWE move VM and as well as an app does move VM, allowing SWE builders to simultaneously build on both ecosystems and jumpstart their project. Um, so, obviously, SWE is going to launch, it's going to take a while for adoption. Um, they're probably going to go the same struggles as Aptos. I hope they're doing a little bit better in terms of execution. Um, it seems like their token share is pretty community oriented, which is a good sign. Um, so I'm personally excited for that. Um, but if you are a speed project, you're probably not going to have the liquidity for a few months. Um, so instead of just being locked up in one specific um, area and having to wait until we adapt, you can simultaneously launch on movement as well. Get access to average liquidity, jumpstart your user base, get CCM adoption, um, and it can work in tandem. Uh, we don't see ourselves as a certain competitor in Apple since we, um, we just want, like the analogy we use is a rising tide raise all ships. Um, we want to provide support to the movie system. We see that being done through Avalanche um, and then hopefully we can support Sui builders and Aptos builders.
Great. Awesome. Stoked to see it. Pillar processing is something very interesting. Um, and the AVA Labs engineering team is particularly stoked about this. Um, so for a little context, um, AVA Labs tried to do parallel processing in the past. The way they did it was through blocks. Um, it ended up being slow and sequential, so they kind of scrapped it. Um, so with the Hyper VM and in tandem with some tech we were building, um, we're looking to bring parallel processing um, to the Avalanche ecosystem. Um, Move allows for that through the way that uh, the block SCM structure design is. So basically, we can allow for parallel processing similar to Solana VM, um, and we can bring that to Avalanche consensus. Um, like we'd be modifying the Hyper VM to allow for parallel processing. That's some innovation that we're working on internally with the Labs team. So um, maybe you can talk about how this how relates to, to the Exchain to and the, the, DAG the DAG reorg. Yeah. So subnets use different um, like set of validators, obviously. Um, so our parallel processing wouldn't necessarily affect um, the DAG or the, even the primary chain itself. Um, because we would be working as essentially a different no, environment. I mean, I mean, how does this relate? Like, um, the parallel processing happened natively on the X chain for yeah. a while, and they yeah. they ditched that because they couldn't yeah. find, according to Goon, uh, DEXs that would take the parallel processing. Mm -hmm. So for us, obviously, we have move based DEXs. So if if you look at any Aptos DEX, some of our partners, um, like Chaos Exchange. They're built to handle parallel processing. Um, so that won't be an issue for us. If anything, we'll be able to onboard that to Avalanche and allow them to address that problem issue. Um, but yeah, I think when they did it, ALAS did it, that was back when it was a lot more difficult for integrating parallel processing, right? I believe like Solana only was the one who could kind of handle it. Um, but now that we're seeing more move adoption, we're seeing a lot of move protocols uh, pop up, a lot of people doing integration of the pillar processing. I think it's a great chance for Ava Labs um, and more teams to integrate pillar processing because now the dApps are built um, to allow for that. Great. A little bit of comparison about move, Slurdy and Rust. Um, like I like to describe move as a block, like the C++ of blockchain technology. Um, and I'll, I've pretty much done Slurdy, Rust, and Move for a lot of my life. Uh, and Move was kind of the quickest to pick up. It was very intuitive, um, very easy to learn. It's kind of like if you've low classes in C++, they're like, it was designed to have like objects modules um, and be very object oriented in that front. So like any like college software could pick up Move as quickly as you could um, C++, which is pretty exciting, especially when you start doing like university events, when you start putting hackathons, um, instead of having some kind of abstract language like I, Wasm's pretty hard to pick up. Um, I think you can attest to that, but Move is pretty pretty easy to pick up. Um, the documentation kind of sucks right now. Um, so we're building that out to make it easier for developers to learn, pick it up and learn. Um, like I touched on, Move also allows for single mutable references. Um, so if the DAO attack or whatever wouldn't simply happen in Move, but it could happen in Slurdy, it could happen in Rust. Um, you have on-chain protection through free SFG attack embedded protection um, and module isolation. So uh, that means if you're launching a module, which is like a smart contract equivalent, um, it, it's first tested for type safety, memory safety, and making sure it's formally verified, and then it's deployed, whereas Solidity can just be a contract can be deployed and then be exploited after I'm the not fact. Sure there is any formal verification in Solidity, right? Yeah, I don't think so. It just, you can literally deploy any contract and then anyone can figure out if it's bad after that. Um, move, the, it's, like, it's like TSA pre-check. Um, for a uh, smart contract language. It can't be deployed unless it's like secure. Yep, cool. There's more comparisons. So some innovation we're doing here. Um, obviously, we're building out RESTful and JSON RPC support to support endpoint wrapping. Um, so for context, the move-based VM is kind of more, it's a RESTful API. Um, so we had to build out some wrapping to integrate with Avalanche code consensus, um, allowing the Avalanche consensus to be VM blind, except OB codes from any compiler. Uh, we're bringing parallel processing to Avalanche through transaction propagation, block sequencing, batch storage, and parallel ledger certification. And also we're bringing a lot of tooling. So a um, huge struggle we've seen in Move is there's no like Truffle equivalents, there's no Ganache equivalents. Um, there's pretty much a Telegram group chat and like a Discord channel. And that's how you learn Move with a few websites. Um, wow. We want to change that. Like I literally learned um, move through a Telegram channel and people like sending me like code bits, um, which is definitely like it was definitely hard. But also like I was a Rust builder, so um, it wasn't too difficult. 
Uh, but if you're looking to pick up move right now, it's pretty much not that conducive. So we want to make it a lot better onboarding process. Uh, and then in tandem with like obviously Aptos and Sui are going to be doing a lot of hackathons. They have huge war chests um, to do that. Um, so that only benefits us. Is there is there like a hard hat for move? Yes. So there's a hard hat move that we built out. Um, it's just literally called hard hat dash move. So all those tools are available now. Cool. Also, we launched like the movement to the eye. So um, anyone, any move builder can integrate with the command line interface, launch, debug, and interact with nodes. Um, so it's like exactly how AppDAS works and how Sui works. We have moves for contracts interacting with the Avalanche network. Um, this module is compiled by the CLI and prepared for deployment. We have like built in entry functions. Yeah, I think that's a little bit about like what we're building. Um, let's, can... uh, let's, let's see those tokenomics. Oh, yeah, I'll share that. <laughs> Let me pull back up. If you'd like, that is. No, it's fine. All right. Our tokenomics, pretty community oriented. Um, so 60% is big going to the community um, to one way or another. Um, so we, the breakdown is 15% of foundation, 30% staking rewards. I think we actually up that. Um, I nice. believe Ava Labs is like 50%. So we're looking to get that up to like 40. Um, the key is just bring back the tokens to the community. You really can't see adoption if you put all the tokens in the hand of investors. Like I get it, you make more money, um, but in the long term, no one's gonna use your chain if the investors are pocketing everything, if the team's pocketing everything. You wanna make sure that you're able to provide the tokens back to the community who is the ones who can use the chain. And ultimately, if you are looking for profit, that will bring you back dividends in the future. But I think our entire narrative is tokens in the hand of community, build up the community, and that's how you see adoption. Agreed. I don't know why I pulled up. Token release schedule, um, it's more for investors, but. Um, and a little bit of our roadmap. So we actually have a demo up and live. I can put it in like a Twitter yeah, Send me space. a link. I'll, I'll put it in the, in the chat. Yeah. Do you want the video or do you want the actual link to interact? Uh, up to you. I'll, I'll just, I'll put it in the caption. I'll paste it in our chat. And then... Anyone can actually interact with it. We have a DAX live. So we have a movement DAX that can be interacted with. And if you're interested in playing with it, the subnet's actually live right now. We are, it's actually our first time going out of stealth. Um, and we'll be, we'll cool. be at- well, We're, glad, we're thrilled stuff. to have you. Yeah, so we've been in stealth for the last like two months, just head on the ground building and fundraising. This is probably the first time, we don't even have a, like a social media is up yet. That's gonna be coming out next month. Um, so this is the first time I'm, we're talking about this. Um, so thank you for that, Nathan. Awesome. Um, wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you. And the next month we'll be at the summit. I'll be speaking at a panel and we have a move workshop there. So please stop by if you're in Barcelona um, and reach out to me if you're interested. And then we'll be going public next month with a raise announcement. So very excited for that. Great. How, how can we get involved? Is there like a, a test net? So our test net is coming out in a month and a half. Um, we're building that out as we speak. We have it out right now, so you can interact with the decks. You can make smart contract interactions. Um, it's pretty, pretty um, like infantile right now because bringing move like a whole new virtual machine to Avalanche takes rigorous testing, um, and we don't want to stress the network too much. Um, but we should be able to. You should be able to test it out if you want to get on it. Yeah, um, that's super cool. We're we're doing a similar concept. We're we're gonna be in incentivized testnet for some time how do you guys um uh, evaluate threat risk um like how, how are you kind of modeling that so what we're going to do is like as we we're onboarding users slowly so right now pretty much only investors team and like the people who are tuning into this can interact with the actual um devnet um so there shouldn't be much network struggles, but we're slowly gonna onboard more and more waves. So um, we're gonna have like wait list, onboard like 10 people, 20 people, slow, slowly bring on people. And there's trust test the network. So as we keep on onboarding uh, new developers, we're gonna stress test, see what the TPS is, uh, make sure that the network's not going down. Um, if we need more nodes, 
we're going to get more nodes. We're working with Banky on that front, one of our core partners, um, and then getting more hardware node providers. I'm curious, how many nodes is um, Landside running? Right now, we're we're only running nodes locally. We haven't run. We're not <laughs> on testnet yet, so that's yeah. going to change. It, we'll, we're going to we're going to start in under 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually the recognition is like eight test nodes, uh, test nodes for um, test net. And then we're probably going to like 15, 20 ish and then go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to have a couple different uh, validator providers. So, so mm -hmm. course one's going to provide validators anchor. Um, some of the, the nodes are going to be run on Nirvana Lab, so I wanted to give them mm -hmm. a shout out. Um, they're a super cheap way to run validator nodes. So if you're looking to bootstrap, reach out to them. They're great. Um, what I mean by threat assessment is like, you know, we're, yeah. we're connecting IBC to Avalanche. So yeah. our threat model is open sourcing the light client. You guys don't have, you're not, kind of in that zone because you're sort of in a separate zone but how are you modeling um how are you modeling threat assessment like from the protocol level in terms of like people it's taking the code and forking it and building out that well for forks is one thing i i think that the risk of forks is pretty low because of um the network effect yeah. um what what i mean is like how do like you know, what do your auditors say? Like, where are the threats there? So we haven't had a code base audit yet. Um, we're working with that to, once we finish this next sprint, we're going to onboard some move based auditors and as well as some average based auditors. So at that point we'll have a risk assessment, um, okay. but don't have any metrics right now. Yeah. So our, our, you know, the way that we're thinking about it is, um, is it's kind of like, so we we have another. This is sort of a, a plug for another uh, talk by Dispel. Dispel provides moving target defense. Mm -hmm. So that's like if you take a look at Dispel.com, they do uh, they secure like water systems, like state level security, um, and they can provide some help from the validator side. Um, it's a little bit they're not really on the IBC level, but I I think that they can you know, secure enclaves, secure enclave execution is like a really valuable defense system. Um, so we're, we're sort of exploring that with them. The, the other thing that we can do is, is um, spend a ton of time in, in testnet, right. You know, basically incentivizing people to break it. Um, the IBC like clients are, are relatively clear to build. It'll take us about four months to build, but um that's sort of how we're, we're thinking about it and, um, you know, trying to get as many audits as we can. Who are you guys looking to? Who, who's auditing? Like what companies uh, are you Hacken will audit. Um, we've also, like, talked to some white hats like um, Grim. Um, um, it's really it's dependent really on, uh, uh, on, on budget. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, some of them can be like, costly. Um, so we, I think our approach is something we're gonna have like one move based auditor, which is like move bit or like auditor sec. Um, they worked a lot with Atlas and Suite, and have like one avalanche based like auditor to kind of audit the subnet part um, and make sure everything's good on that front, and then like generate two reports and have that on our website. Cool, cool. Um, uh, I have some I have notes some on some of the movement stuff. stuff. I think a question I had is like, I know you guys are building with IBC communication. Um, so like if we wanted to interact, for example, with Cosmos, like if a move builder, for example, wanted to interact with Osmosis or interact with Juno, stuff like that, uh, would that be like we communicate with Landslide, Landslide communicates with Cosmos? Is that how we go? Yeah. Uh, alternatively, it's, an inter it's a really interesting question. If there are other subnets that want to communicate with it, we'll have to figure out a way to, uh, I mean, the, honestly, the easiest way is to go through Avalanche Warp Messaging. Mm -hmm. and then communicate with landslide yeah because that that's the whole everyone's going to be basically natively bridging through ibc mm -hmm. that's probably the way to do it so why can't someone use like layer zero instead of landslide like 
3D. They they could. There's just, from my understanding, there's no way layer zero, um, like I don't think it's going native. I, you can't run um, osmosis on layer zero. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, like the idea is that the osmosis uh, can deploy an outpost and like run mm -hmm. like their own software stack there and give their own users added liquidity on on Avalanche. So when so is osmosis going to be launching on um, Land Slide? Yeah, they're going to have an outpost. So does that mean they get access to Avalanche liquidity? Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, it'll be, that'll be wild, especially because like th there's finality differentials, right? Yeah. Tendermint will have a slow, like six second, seven second block time. And yep. yeah, you'll have almost instantaneous on, on, uh, on, on the avalanche side. Yeah. I imagine that's very, very attractive. Um, I've heard of some teams like building like, uh, move based bridging between Cosmos ecosystems. Um, so that's pretty interesting, like connecting different, um, ecosystems to move. Um, that's something I've heard. Um, but definitely like, once we launch, we want to definitely be able to communicate with those big Cosmos protocols. Um, so that's when we set up like uh, war messaging between you guys and then yeah, be able to do I that. Think that. I think that's exactly how you would do it. Um, like all, all, otherwise, alternatively, like um, we could explore, like we've, we've, we've discussed this sort of internally, like how to have landslide without landslide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So like what the, like, you know, building towards our demise, mm -hmm. um, which I think actually looks sort of like the interchain security model, like mesh security. Mm -hmm. I think that's what that looks like. You're sort yeah. of renting, you're sort of renting the IBC uh, and the consensus from landslide in some mm -hmm. manner. Yeah, so that's definitely going to be huge, man. When's yeah, your test so launch again? We're, 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 it's funny because so you guys are doing, basically today, <laughs> like we're sort of starting it today. Good. So we're releasing our landslide core update in like a couple minutes. And uh -huh. um, so it's gonna be open source. Um, and that this is just Cosm Wasm minus Tendermint, right? So we yeah. we took for, for those people keeping track at, at home, we took Cosm Wasm, you know, the, the Cosmos SDK and, and, yeah. and Wasm VM and we threw Tendermint out the window and we replaced it with, with Avalanche consensus. And so a lot of that's going to be open source today. Um, and uh, uh, how long are we going to be in testing? At least for five months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and IBC, then... IBC development kicked off a couple of weeks ago. So we're, we're targeting like basically the end of August, somewhere around then, but basically about a four month build. Um, and what support has a Cosmos ecosystem provided so... to you guys? What support? Oh, they've been great, man. Like they, like, uh, it, you know, from an avalanche side, like if you're an AVAX head and you're a red triangle Dorito, uh, uh, you know, crack head, right? If you're an AVAX maxi from the outside, like these chains are, appear to be, um, closed, but they're, but it, like in some cases, like Juno is very interested in expanding Juno, not as a chain, but as like a DAO. Um, mm -hmm. so they're totally open to collaborating. Um, Osmosis has been very supportive um, because I think they see that as well. Um, they want access to other liquidity on other chains. And so um, the support, a lot of the, the financing is coming from the Interchain Foundation. Shout out to Addy, um, who is speaking Sunday night, like super late, but it'll be obviously recorded. So the ICF is in charge of um, the public good uh, uh financing for ibc mm -hmm. um and so the icf is funding funding it because it has to be an open source light client yeah um, they're doing that for all other non-cosmos chains so they're funding the development for near for um uh um for ripple for polka dot and so all of these other chains like start communicating with ibc and it you sort of become an ibc maximalist and an avalanche warp messaging maximalist, like that's yeah. kind of where the maximalism, like, you know, it's sort of like a race to the bottom of consensus algorithms and, um, uh, and, and, and probably data availability. And then, and then yeah. it's a, and then it's a, you know, bet, may the best virtual machine win, right? <laughs> like that's kind of, 
that's kind of the thing. So you guys are gonna be launching with the Cosm Wasm, right? Yeah, is totally. That, so it's Cosm Wasm VM. Yeah, wa the Wasm VM. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So now Avalanche will have Wasm Rust. Right. Move. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind yeah. of it, and and move. Yeah. It's a no brainer, dude. Like it's a it's a no brainer. I think they're only missing Solana at that point, and they have everything. I like think the, Solana. I think Solana is talking to IBC somehow. I just don't know. Yeah. I think it's Neon. I think Neon Labs is doing that. Yeah. So if Solana is talking to IBC, I think yeah, Neon's doing. It. Would you guys be able to communicate with them? As long as yeah, as long as it communicates via IBC, we can we as as long as it communicates with IBC, Avalanche can be the target chain. So what does that mean for like a Solana builder who's looking to launch an Avalanche? Like how would that work for my Optics? So we don't th no, see that. That's the interesting thing. We haven't, we, ha we don't have on our roadmap to build the Solana VM. Yeah. So that's if, you guys, like, if you yeah. guys do that, we could, we could collaborate on that. Cause we can, we, we, you can use landslide to confirm state and you can, yeah. and, and people can port over, you know, basically bridge tokens, but they can't use it. They can't, like, you can't, you don't have a, like a Solana, uh, VM, so they can't. We can't deploy outposts of Solana software, so we have to bring the VM in. That could be something you can do. Yeah, you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. I might have to annoy the Able Labs guys again about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, they, they're, um, you know, you, I mean, you see the arguments on Twitter, so like. No, but that's really exciting. Like, if any VM can work on Avalanche, like you can get any project over. Like, you yeah, can totally. Really the entire web three exactly system. dude that's why bitcoin that's why B btcb right yeah. bridged bitcoin has more liquidity on avalanche than it does on lightning network yeah it's huge right because it's it's just like it's just an argument of of virtual machines and 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 consensus and it obviously wins out yeah i think people tend to not understand that like the value of like cross execution layers they're like it's just a virtual machine just throwing out consensus like what are they actually going to do um and then you think about like okay if if you bring wasm to avalanche what's the tvl of all the product protocols using wasm ridiculous right ridiculous. sauna like has pretty ridiculous like it's not ridiculous in terms of like compare it to like evm but it's still like a substantial amount of um transaction volume obviously the solana community is very active too within twitter um i see that a lot and then this like move itself when you we start like start seeing like actual adoption move is pretty early on um but like when you have app does with a 300 million dollar war chest so he has 350 million dollar war chest and then what we're building like between all that and then some other products that are coming out like there's going to be more move projects and then eventually they're all going to be like okay we can either choose launch on these one networks and make x amount of dollars or we can go to avalanche and communicate with every other execution layers yeah. on top of like the best consensus layer. right and if you notice like this is not a this is not a money problem, right? Yeah. The problem can't be solved by throwing more money at the thing. The problem, because it's a tech issue, yeah. right? You, you, the car can't go faster if you shove money in the tank. That's not the problem. The problem is yeah. that it can't process, it has no TPS, right? That's not yeah. a money issue. Yeah. It's also like, there's like, you can like buy projects. And, so what Aptos is doing um, is like, there's like giving grants out to like a few select people and it's like exclusivity grants. Like you can't leave this uh, protocol for like two years, which yeah, is like that's okay, damaging. Yeah, and like okay, you can you can get these protocols to launch an app class, but then it's like okay, they don't they're not able to communicate with any other uh, ecosystem. They can't launch any, any ecosystem, um, so they're pretty siloed and they kind of die out because like obviously, yeah. and then when you have Sweet coming out, it's like Harold it has a better app class and has like so everyone's hyped up for that. Like it's just not conducive. I think the way to approach move ecosystem development saying, like, hey, you can build an app, you can build a suite, you can build it wherever you want as a move environment. We'll all communicate, we'll all help each other. Um, and eventually that's how you see more adoption. That's what Solana did. Um, a lot of Rust VMs, like there's no exclusivity agreements there. And we've seen like more Rust adoption. Rust is pretty, I would say it's the second biggest hard contract language. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's why, that that ethic is why uh, Ava Labs launched Spruce, right? Which is this permission subnet. Yeah. For institutional finance right it's not like when hyperledger and r3 corda all these like just like a graveyard of of permissioned finance all that that ethos can easily be sniffed out by by uh you know institutions right it's not a hard it's not a hard logic there you want to you want to build open 
uh, if you're going to be open, be uh, be open, right? If you're going to be permissioned, be permissioned within a setting that the validators like T. Rowe Price or Cumberland, that they can run their own systems if they want to have a purple subnet. It's a purple subnet based on whatever regulatory environment it is. But, you know, mm-hmm. you, you can't you can't have it both ways. You can't you can't be yep. open and closed. Yeah, well, we'll see. So, Hopefully, like Q4 2023, you see like double the AVAX projects. That's kind of like. Yeah, we're gonna see some really wild things. I mean, plus we we just had a, a yeah. talk with the gaming, um, gaming freaks. Uh, so yeah, Loco is 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 huge. Um, that just that gaming studio alone is like the largest Series A in Southeast Asia and, and India. Yeah. So, uh, That's yeah, crazy. I'm, I'm curious to see how that happens. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of uh, gaming on Move? What's your opinion? So the narrative with the new community is Aptos is like the DeFi chain and Sui is like the gaming and NFT chain. Um, it just is like, that like the legit narrative or is that just the narrative? That's like the narrative set by like, the corporate. upper people, <laughs> the corporate. In reality, Aptos is neither. Sui, I have more faith in. We'll see how that goes from your cost. Um, but Sui technology is light years ahead of um, Aptos. There is a little bit of a move issue, like a time step issue that we're working on. Um, so we're trying to optimize the Sui VM as well. So the timestamps, uh, you, you know, there's a timestamp VM. Yeah, there's a timestamp VM. So the benefit of Avalanche and Subnets is, in theory, the way Sui VM stores their timestamps is slowing them down a little bit. Um, so we're, we're able to offload those transactions and store all the timestamps on a separate blockchain itself within the Subnet. So we don't face the same issues that Sui is going to face. Um, so in theory, our Sui VM should be actually faster than Sui itself, um, <laughs> which is awesome. which is we can literally port their code because of Avalanche. We can be a faster TPS than Sui. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, awesome. And then we're also working on some other. So there's like a zk Move VM. Um, That's interesting. Obviously, it's more experimental. Um, that is, yeah, that is. But it's more for privacy. Yeah. Um, and zk Sync is, is like, is 12, like 12, twelve months in its test now. Test yeah yeah and they're doing pretty well actually i think their tvl yeah, is yeah. like 80 million yeah, like yeah, um ex- except the one contract hack where the funds were locked up in that one do you hear about that no there was like this one project that raised from a launch pad um and it was like 20 million dollars or something and it got locked up in a smart contract because they used the transfer method um which was which wasn't zk things fault they like they explicitly say in the cli like don't use this method it's gonna like cause a crash but the team did it anyway but I feel like that shouldn't be like included in move. That's not even possible. But wow, send me imagine like you raise like twenty million dollars for your project, and it's like in a smart contract. Send me a link send to that. Um, yeah. We're we're coming up on the hour here, man. This is great. I'd love to have. I'd love to do another Twitter space with you. This is super yeah, exciting. Sure. And hopefully Cooper can hop on. He's yeah, more. Yeah, we'd be glad to help. Like you know, I know that you guys have been in stealth, and um, we we've we've done the same sort of thing. We're we're just like, you know. Brevi like from GoGo Pool is super helpful in, in building mm-hmm. community, so we can include you guys in upcoming, you know, Twitter Spaces. Yeah, that'd be great. I once I think once we go public fully and have our socials mm-hmm. going, um, we can we can collaborate. Have you guys on to the social spiel. Great, man. Rushi, thank you so much for your time. This has been been thrilling. Um, yeah. Next up, we're we're gonna is 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 us. We're gonna I'm gonna interview myself and our yeah. CTO. Um, yeah. And then we have some other um, great guests, uh, SparkNet, which is the other uh, sort of experimental VM uh, yeah. platform on Avalanche that's happening at 3.30 PST. Yep. Um, so that'll be really cool. Um, so I- I'm stoked to see them. Also, Pulsar is going to be on that. So looking forward mm-hmm. to it. Yep. Thanks so much for your time, Nathan. Excited Thanks, for this. Sir. See you. LFG. Bye-bye. Peace.